lounge and sun. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan, and with me today is a guest that needs no introduction, but I'm still doing it. The man himself, Mr. Kevin Eastman, the co-creator of the Ninja Turtles, one of my favorite creators ever in comic books. So glad to have you back on today. Thank you very much. Nice to be back here with you. It's uh, it's awesome. I really enjoy coming on and hanging out with you and you guys and and ch- chatting. And this is great. So. Yeah, so you know, let's let's get into it. I, I have to talk about it because you know, recently you and Peter Laird, your co-creator, have been mm-hmm. doing some videos where you're going through the com the old comics and kind of getting into the minutia of like creating it in those early days. How has it been kind of like reminiscing and stuff with him going through those? Oh, it's a blast. You know, it's it's funny the um and it's really um a wonderful process because you know, Pete and I, you know, even you know. There's different rumors out there, but, you know, Pete and I have never, you know, not been friends and we've never sort of not been in touch, but he's um, often been more retired. Um, you know, sometimes you just need to step away from things. And but he's really um, in, been enjoying lately getting back into some of the uh, uh, the early issues. And, <clears throat> and it's almost like falling in love again, mm-hmm. uh, you know, after, you know, working so many years with the same project and the same thing. So this was a, an idea that he asked me to join. He had done uh, with the KFAB guys, he'd done a, um, a review of Turtles issue one and they'd gone through it. And I heard about it and I was thrilled because, you know, I'm always happy to see him out there. I, I tell him that uh, we're so lucky we have so many incredible fans and that I want him to feel some of the love I get to experience by going to shows and, and right. doing these kind of like chatting with you right now. Um, so I was really thrilled that he did that. And then he uh, invited me to the next one, um, which was fantastic. We had a really good time. Um, Cause once you dip your toe and going down that memory lane, it's almost like you were there again and you remember a little bits and pieces that you might've forgotten, blow away a few cobwebs, you know? Mm-hmm. And so um, we're going to keep, you know, as long as he wants to keep um, doing those kind of things, I'm I'm thrilled. I love that. You know, he's turtles wouldn't be turtles without the two of us together, and uh, you know, it wouldn't be us without them. And I am so. Yeah, of course not. I mean, it's just it's so it was so cool. I remember when I found out that the two of you were going to be going through issues, and I mm-hmm. remember like because I I eat up anything I can get with the two of you, you know. So okay. seeing you guys talk and like reminiscing and just like I don't know, it just it felt like. A behind the scenes that we've never really gotten with the two of you in terms of like talking turtles comics yep no and and that's what that's the fun of it because it is it's 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 funny because even um you know as good as some as good as our as we think our memories are sometimes mm-hmm. <laughs> um but i was like you know because even if we're going through some of the stuff i said did you draw do you remember did you draw that or did yeah. i do that or how did you know who who how did this we arrive at this and it's sort of we have a good laugh because it is it was that wonderfully organic at that time when we were passing pages back and forth and and it was a lot of you know uh, hanging out in the same room and a lot of banter and stuff so it was really fun to to try to remember some more specifics and you know you know no memory is perfect but it was it the journey was fun and and it's great to try to remember um in some detail yeah i mean it's definitely awesome to watch you know and i know like peter retained the rights to be able to publish turtle comics if if he wanted to right like if he wanted to write his own continue what he's doing do you ever see you guys may be collaborating on something in the future. I know you kind of teased something on on your Facebook. Well, it, it's it's well, it's tough because um, you know I sold my rights to Peter. Peter then sold them to Viacom, and then I was then hired back to go work on the comics and 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 the cartoon shows and things through Viacom. But it was um, uh, if you look at say last ronin as example was an idea that i um peter and i wrote in back in 1987 set 30 years in the future and i had the original notes and i still got a bunch of story ideas kind of like that but this is the most detailed and so when i said i'd like to to and i said to him i said i want to i want to take this story and 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 finish it and expand it and update it and all the things and i said do you want any part of it do you want any say and he said well i'm kind of I'm still kind of retired and you know if you want to do something with it then then you know go ahead um and so um that was just a good example of that evolved then from an original idea that we had that's you know and and the structure of the story was what that we we basically came up with at then and you know but um so we've talked about <laughs> doing some other stuff but with his own retained rights i believe in and something to ask pete really at the end is uh i believe um 
if he does more stories, it's only if he writes and draws them and does them himself. Oh, okay. Um, and then, um, and I can be totally wrong here, but then I think even if he does those, anything he creates and comes up with, it becomes owned by Viacom, who owns all the rights to the Turtles right now. So I know he does have some rights. I'm not sure what they are. Um, and, and I don't think we we could do that. But also Nickelodeon um, as a partner has been so, you know, wonderful um and that they they said you know if you and peter ever want to do anything um just let us know and i think you know um peter and i have talked about um teaming up on a couple covers in the future and uh, uh things so we're hoping to do more stuff together and it's just a matter of, of finding out what and uh um you know so it's and that's the fun is to you know let's let's see what happens and and uh um you know be nice to have some you know, next time I come back and visit you, maybe we'll have some more exciting news. Yeah, no, I mean, I love all Turtles news, you know, and like, it's it's so cool hearing you say that about Nickelodeon, you know, because so often, like, a property can get sold, and you don't yeah. see the original creators attached to it anymore, or you don't see them kind of handle the property with the love and care that I feel like the Turtles have been shown for the, you know, since you guys sold the rights to them, you know, I feel like, especially keeping you involved and hearing you say that, like, Peters can be involved as much as he wants as well. I think that that's, it's really awesome to hear in terms of like still keeping you guys connected to the property that you guys made. Yeah. Again, I can't say enough that, um, especially, you know, Jeff Whitman, who's head of the publishing at uh, Nickelodeon is just, you know, he's as big a geek and fan as we all are. And so he's really, he's really into the ideas and stuff we were doing and he's really supportive and, and uh, he's one of the, it's great. Cause he's like, he has ideas, but it's nothing like, you know, it's, you know, he, he just wants, to see what we have and then be part of it, you know, almost, uh, but then, uh, but yeah, uh, with the animated stuff and other things with Nickelodeon, they just been, you know, cause they don't have to ask me or Pete to do anything. Um, and, and they do, they always are very considerate and very kind. And that's, that's, uh, they're really respectful. So I really appreciate that. And I know you, and I know you have your hands full, like the IDW stuff. I know your story consulting on the ongoing. Um, and then you have lot last Ronin lost years that that spinoff came out recently. Um, yep. How in, how involved are you in terms of like other turtle stuff that's coming out? Do they keep you apprised of all of it? Are you like you know how they did a Saturday morning cartoon adventures uh, one recently? Um, what's your typical involvement with that kind of stuff? It's it's some of it's a little bit more peripheral, um, but the what they've done is because um, I was lucky enough to work with the incredible Tom Waltz, who um, I mean the guy the guy wrote the first hundred issues um, you know over yeah. eleven years and just killed it. But he was part of you know it's like I like to say it takes a village, but at the end of the day, those 100, now those 100 scripts, those are Tom's um, and Tom really nailed it. And that's why I loved working with him. And I still love working with him so much on uh, um, Last Ronin and Lost Years and things like that. So there are things like the Saturday Morning Adventures where they, um, Charles and the guys said, this is what we're doing, the throwback to the original Archie series. And I'm like, this is really awesome because we know eric burnham that is a, is writing him and uh, the art team is great so i'll do covers on that and that's fun but we're not really we don't have any direct creative involvement but we already know eric and eric so we, not that we need it not that they need to ask us to it's already great and so with uh other things that they're doing like um the street fighter thing that's coming out we really don't do much of that but we kind of we're adjacent to it but right now tom and i are focused on uh, last run in lost years that'll lead into uh, last run in part two um, nice. and um, tom's had this really brilliant idea before issue 100 about the armageddon game and so he's specifically writing armageddon game which um, is weaved into the ongoing series which sophie's writing and we we kind of always see that but it's it's really tom's running his ship and sophie's running his and they intersect and then uh, everything's part of it so it's it's quite a lot to manage um and a lot of fun and there's a lot of moving parts but uh what's what's great about um you know they try to editorially say you know they want us focus on last run in lost years and the next last run in series and that's good <laughs> that's where our focus should be yeah last run was amazing i absolutely Thanks. loved it i mean i have the hardcover sitting right there on the shelf behind me you know so um uh, can you kind of i mean i know you can't divulge too much information i mean lost lost years is still going but um mm -hmm. last run and two how much of that is is brand new stuff or is that kind of also pulled from some of the the old notes that you had for the original the, series 
No, good question. It's actually, it's a really good question because no, that's all new. It'll be all new. And what it is, is it's, you know, grounded in the turtle universe slash the Ronin verse, as we call it. And uh, um, with Lost Years, for example, it's um, kind of like a prequel slash sequel in that we picked this moment as Tom and I were going through the um, uh, the creation and the execution of um, Last Ronin, we found so many story pockets that we wanted to go back and visit. For example, the foundation of Lost Years is Michelangelo's journey from basically around issue four of Last Ronin, the 16 years he trained before he ends up on page one of Last Ronin, you know, the first Last Ronin. Um, at the same time, so that's makes up um, about 80%, 85% of the issue. But then the um, um, prequel part of that is the introduction of the new turtles that we showed at the end of Lost, uh, Last Ronin. Um, you'll see them develop through the five issues, six counting Lost Day. Um, and each issue of Lost Years takes place three years apart. Oh, so okay. issue one, you see the new turtles, as example, the new turtles at age three. Issue two, they're at age six. Issue three, they're at age nine. So by the time you get to issue five, they're at age 15, which leads us right into Last Ronin 2, which is focused on, you know, 16 years after, 15 years after the end of Last Ronin, what's happened in New York, what's, you know, Casey Marie has now trained up the new turtles based on Splinter's teachings and, you know, April's still part of that. And they're facing a whole new specific adventure in the turtles universe. So it's like they are the next new teenage mutant ninja turtles um so it's uh um but yeah so it's it's last year's is a prequel sequel <laughs> yeah I, prequel. yeah yeah that that like scene with michelangelo where he's like getting beat up he's allowing himself to get beat up and then he just loses it was one of the most powerful scenes i think i've ever seen in a turtles comic that was, you know, thank you. And and that was, you know, the thing that when Tom and I discussed approaching the series, because it really is, that's where, you know, I need, when I first told Tom about the last run and the concept of the last run, and I said, um, you know, it's going to be 40 page issues, they're going to be oversized. And the last run is Michelangelo. And this is why, you know, besides him being the firstborn, the first turtle that was ever drawn, even before he was named Michelangelo, the first turtle I drew, but also what people know about Michelangelo as a character, he's kind of the more laid back, you know, even in the um, later series was more comedic and the funny kind of guy. So the fact that um, as a character arc, he had to go the furthest from that kind of character to be the cold blooded, you know, vigilante hell bent on redemption and, and, and finally ending this, you know, um, ages long feud between the two families um, is quite a journey. So that was important that we touch on that and say that, you know, this journey, and that's just issue one. Where do you see yeah. what's going to happen? <laughs> While I'm working with Tom Walt so much is um, we're of the same mind in that it's always story first. And if we love it as a story, we feel as part of you all as our family and the people yeah. we're all writing, we're writing for ourselves, which means we're writing for you. And so if we like it, we think... Um, you guys will dig it too. So, and uh, man, where do you see what we got in store? So, yeah, I, I can't wait. Um, I know I got to let you go. If I could just ask okay. you one last question um, before yep, you go, sure. I just want to ask them, um, is there any other turtles things that are in the works that you can talk about or tease to kind of send us off? Oh man, that's, you know, it's, it's really, um, not really, you know, and, and I mean it only because it's, it's when I, you know, our horizon line uh, for, for certainly Tom and I and the team of, you know, the Escorza brothers and Ben and, and the thing is like we're um we've staged and set up um last run in lost years to lead us into uh, another two pounder page epic which is um last run in two mm -hmm. and then we have ideas for last run in three if we do our job right and you guys dig it then we'll go there so we're talking just on our horizon line like I said it, it's it's probably three years two two years plus of of work um, but at the same time, you know, we're looking at, uh, um, I've just enjoyed so much what Sophie Campbell has been doing with the, yes, uh, the ongoing job. series and yeah, that's, it's a, I, you know, I've been inking, um, <laughs> she's done these, she has these brilliant pencils and, uh, and I, uh, we wanted to work together more, uh, since we met many, many years ago. Um, but I've been inking her pencils and just having the absolute time of my life, but I really 
am digging what she's doing as a storyline. And I kind of know where that's going after at a certain point, but we're, we're sort of letting it develop um, comfortably and organically. And, and, and oftentimes, you know, with the story first concept, we'll, we'll let the story guide us uh, a, a bit, a bit. So, yeah, but it, this, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Ronin verse with Tom for a good, <laughs> for a good long while. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you know, but we're, we're all, Keeping our fingers crossed for a last run in animated feature film. Now that I want to see that that, <laughs> that that's that's such a that's such a great <laughs> little little pearl to drop us with, man. I just want to you know again thank you so much for talking to me. Like I've said before, I mean, I I know I fanboy out a little bit, but the turtles have been a part of my life since I was like one. So I love them so much. I love everything you guys have been doing with it since IDW took it over. You know, like they've been doing a great job, and I know that you have a lot to do with that. So. Keep doing those dope covers. I really loved your inking over Sophie Campbell's pencils. That was awesome what I saw the other day. So I definitely look forward to doing this with you again sometime in the future, man. Yeah, let's definitely, well, let's let's circle back and uh, keep the conversation going because it's a lot more fun to be had. So uh, I like, enjoy it very much. And uh, yeah, this is great. I enjoy chatting with you. So. All right, man. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> you too. Have a good night. Cheers.